And in this video, we're going to begin our lecture series on Visual C++. And for the IDE that we plan to use, we're going to go through Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express. Uh, this IDE is pretty much similar to pretty much the others, such as Borland C++ and the newer editions of the Visual Studio project. Um, but, you know, this is uh, typically a friendly environment for most people, uh, and it does pretty much anything you would want to do, especially for the foundations. All right, so we're going to begin by clicking uh, New Project. Uh, and then we're going to select a Win32 console application. And let's give this a name. Uh, let's call this, say, uh, Nemo Project. And then I'm going to click OK. And then some prompts come up, so I'm going to click Next. And I'm going to click Empty Project, so I want to start, you know, totally from scratch. And then I want to click Finish. So once you've, you know, constructed your empty project, then I want to go over here to Source Files, right click, go to add, then new item, and then I'm going to select .cpp file, and then I'm going to call this uh, main. So this is going to be the main uh, source code that is going to be used uh, for writing all of your code. So this, you know, creates your blank uh, coding environment. Uh, so the main structure of the code goes like this. So the first thing that we need to do is include what we call an IO stream library. So this is going to allow us to interact with the user via input and output from the keyboard. So input from the keyboard, output from the screen. And that's pretty much what this include IO stream allows you to do. Uh, the using uh, namespace uh, std semicolon statement is just a common practice. Uh, we'll discuss exactly what this does, but it allows us to suppress a lot of uh, repetitious code that we would use over and over again. The next thing we want to do is create a function uh, that is going to be executed every time we want run this program. Uh, so we're going to call this int main open close parenthesis and then open close brace. And then at the end of this, we're going to say return zero semicolon. And then we're going to save that. So pretty much all of our code, at least for the time being, is going to be located within this main function. So once we run this program, the compiler goes to the source code and opens up this main function, and everything, everything that happens in this main function is going to be executed. Uh, so let us sort of demonstrate uh, how to, you know, run our first code. So let's assume, you know, we want to run the traditional hello world type of program. All right, so what we need to do is say uh, C out uh, two arrows to the left and then put in double quotes, hello world. And um, yeah, we can end it like there. So if we run this code, uh, which is usually by the control F5, uh, then it's gonna take a little bit of time. And then once it runs, then you have this little box that comes up. But you know, since it goes to this code and it runs through this hello world operation, there's nothing else for this program to do, so it just closes automatically. So what we may want to do is sort of, you know, force this program to sort of sit around and wait for us to do something. So, you know, we can wait for input uh, from the user. Uh, so let us assume we want to read in some uh, integer, let us say. Uh, so I'm going to create a space in memory for an integer, I'm gonna call it x. Uh, so once we say hello world, uh, then we need to read in this integer. Uh, so let's, you know, say a couple things here. Now we want, you know, this next line, so C out, uh, you know, please enter a number and press enter to exit. So this is like a prompt that's going to be displayed to the user. We don't want these two lines to be displayed on the same exact line. So what you can do is go to this first line and go to input end L. That is going to force uh, this next line to be on a new line totally. So once we display that text, then we want to read in a particular value for that variable x. So cn uh, has the same exact structure as cout, but it has two arrows in the other direction. So that's going to be cnx. So what this program now does is it goes into this main function, it creates space in memory to save an integer x, an integer, remember, is any number such as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and they're negatives, no decimals or anything like that. So it's going to display hello world on the first line. 
On the second line, it's going to display, please enter a number and press enter to exit. And then it's going to wait for us to uh, input a value for X. So once we type in a number and press enter, that number that we have entered is going to be inputted into the location uh, that X is saving for us. So let's execute this program to sort of see this in action. So we're going to run this and let's see here. So notice it says, hello world, please enter a number and press enter to exit. So I can press two uh, and then press enter and then it's going to exit the program. So that's pretty much uh, the first basic program that anyone can run. But let's assume that you want to do something a little bit more uh, useful, uh, like add two numbers together, uh, subtract two numbers or multiply two numbers together. Now, a lot of the examples that I'm going to do, at least, you know, uh, when we, you know, become familiar with some of these uh, topics uh, in this series, I'm going to use a lot of mathematical examples, uh, namely because that's, you know, uh, my primary background. Uh, but eventually we'll get into other applications uh, uh, later down the line once we have all our tools built up. So let's assume we want to add together two different numbers. Uh, so I'm going to create space in memory for two numbers. I'm going to call it X and I'm going to call it Y. So, you know, we've created our memory uh, for two integers X and Y. And we say, hello, uh, user. Uh, let's be a little bit more friendly uh, to whoever, whoever is reading this. And then I'm going to ask them to please enter, please enter a value for X. And then I'm going to create some space and then they're going to input X. And then on the next line, I'm going to say, okay, uh, can you please enter a value for Y? And then what are we going to do? We're, we're going to see in uh, the value for Y. Now, in some textbooks, usually they do not put uh, the C in on indention lines, but I like to do it just as, uh, you know, because I know that this uh, corresponds to whatever uh, thing that precedes it. So it's just to help me organize some things. So then I'm going to see out the sum. So the sum of X and Y is, and then I'm going to do two arrows and I'm going to output the value of X plus Y. And then I'm going to go to a new line. Uh, actually, I'm going to go down two lines and you'll see pretty much what I'm doing here. Uh, so then I can say, okay, uh, uh, enter any number and press enter to exit. So this is the same exact prompt uh, that was there before. And we're going to see in some value for X. We're not going to do anything with it. So it's not really useful what this value uh, is here. Uh, so let's, you know, run this code to see pretty much how it is executed. Uh, so let's uh, run this. All right, so here is our program. So hello user, please enter a value for X. So let's type in say negative nine uh, and please enter a value for Y. So, so let's type in uh, 32. Uh, so then it says the sum of X and Y is negative nine plus 32, which is in fact 23. Uh, so our program has done exactly what it's supposed to. Uh, so we can exit this program now. Now we can also display the difference between these values. Uh, for example, the difference uh, between X and Y is, and then we can output the difference, X minus Y, and then we can go down uh, two lines if we want to. And then we can also display the product of X and Y is, and then X times Y. So multiplication in C++ is represented by that star. And this is the same for a lot of programming languages. And you can also display the quotient. So the quotient of X and Y is, and then we can output X divided by Y. So div uh, division is represented by the forward slash. And then, you know, the program will end. All right, so let us uh, run this program just to make sure that it does exactly what we want it to. So please enter value for X. So we can type in, say, 15. We can type in a value for Y. So let's type in negative 3. 
So the sum of x and y is 12. The difference between x and y is 18. The product of x and y is negative 45. And the quotient of x and y is 5. Now there is one slight thing that needs to be mentioned here. Remember, x and y are defined to be integers. Now let's see if we try to input some values besides integers. So let's type in uh, some decimals, for example. So let's type in, you know, uh, 5 for x, and let's type in 2.3 for uh, y. Uh, so, of course, you know, it didn't really allow us to do much. You know, pretty much uh, got angry at us and closed the program. Um, so usually when it does that, usually we have some problems. So remember, int is only going to allow you to... Uh, have integers be inputted there. Uh, some compilers will just, you know, round it down or round it up, or pretty much just cause you problems like mine just did. So if you want to have uh, decimals, then you can change int to what we call float, uh, f o f l o a t. So that's going to allow you to input decimals. So let's run this code again. Uh, nothing else needs to be changed except now uh, we should be able to save uh, decimals uh, for our values. All right, so input the value of x, so let's type in 5 and then 3.2, or negative 3.2. And then we have our decimal representations uh, for x uh, and y for the sum, difference, product, and quotient. Now, every time you write a program, you definitely need to be clear uh, to your audience exactly what you're calculating. So let's assume people don't know what sum is, so you know we can write x plus y in parentheses. In terms of difference, it definitely matters the order uh, like x minus y and y minus x are different. So let's, you know, type in here just for clarity that x minus y is what we're calculating. Uh, product doesn't really matter, but we can write x times y just to be clear here. And quotient is another thing uh, that really makes a difference on the order for which you are clarifying. So let's type in uh, x over y uh, right before the statement uh, is. So, you know, once we run this program, then now our program is going to be a little bit more clear. So let's type in negative 3.4 and 2.9 here, and it's going to calculate all our values. So, of course, notice that this is a little bit more cluttered. Maybe I want my uh, input values uh, separated from my output values. So it's possible that I may want to precede our output, namely the sum is uh, by an inline. Uh, so we can put an inline there, and that should input a space uh, or a line space between please enter value and the sum of x and y. Uh, so we can, you know, run a program just to make sure that that does exactly what we want it to. So 3.4, 9.8, and notice that, you know, it puts a uh, space there. Uh, and also you may want uh, these outputs to be... Uh, on adjacent lines next to each other. If that is what you want, then of course you can delete one of these double lines. Uh, but of course, after this last one, this is not the same as the goal of these. Uh, so you may want to have that extra line separated there. So of course, once we run this code, uh, this is going to allow us, so negative 9.4 and 2.9. And that is going to give us the sum, difference, product, and quotient of the two integers for which I have specified. Now, there is one small thing that may go wrong in this program. Uh, for example, what if I type in 8.2 and I enter 0 for y? So notice that you cannot divide by 0 in general. So when you output this quotient, uh, you get this 1 dot pound inf, which is supposed to represent like an infinite number. Uh, so def uh, typically in a program like this or a calculator, usually you want to say, oh, you cannot divide by zero and you want to have them, you know, input another number. Um, but, you know, this video is just, you know, here to introduce you to some of the uh, main structures uh, that you need to know in order to write some decent C++ code. So let's just briefly go over what we've talked about here. Uh, so if you just want to input integers x and y, just write int before x and y. But if you want decimals, uh, use float instead. And there are other data types that we'll discuss in the upcoming videos. Uh, Couts with double quotes is usually used, is always used with double arrows going left. Cn is always used with double arrows going right. And you must have the include IO stream uh, library included in this program in order to use these. And that's some of the main basics uh, for input and output, and also the four basic binary operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division.